In today's video, we're going to be looking at the biggest inverter generator that Harbor Freight sells. This is the Predator 9500, also called the Honda Killer. And we're going to look at this unit in detail, test out the features to see if this thing is actually even close to a Honda or if it's just a piece of junk. Before you can use your generator for the first time, you've got to add gas, add oil, and connect the battery. And the battery is already installed inside the generator, but you do need to supply your own gas and oil. Adding the oil was easy, you just remove this access panel and then you can take out the dipstick and add about 1 quart of 10W30 oil. The battery is on the opposite side of the generator, so we just need to remove that other access panel. Now if you ever forget what's underneath which panel, they actually print it on that sticker on the bottom. Connecting up the battery was pretty easy, you just need a Phillips head screwdriver and a wrench, and everything you need is already attached to the end of the terminals. Now I just need to add regular gas to the tank, and by regular I mean 87 octane. I should also note this tank is huge at 6.8 gallons, and they claim this thing can run for 18 and a half hours at a quarter load. The gas tank is entirely made of steel, and it also includes a fuel gauge. Let's hit this and see what happens. <laughs> That's amazing because this has never been run. You can see it smoking because we got the choke. Switch it to run. Using the Predator is easy. They put everything you're going to need right on this control panel, including the outlets, switches, even the fuel valve. The outlets include a 120 volt 30 amp twist lock, along with two GFCI protected 120 volt 20 amp plugs. Finally, you've got this 120 or 240 volt 30 amp connector. This is the one you're going to commonly use to connect to your house using a transfer switch or some type of interlock. And this is your eco throttle switch. Think of this as kind of like a gas saver because when you turn it on, the engine is only going to run as fast as the amount of stuff you have plugged in. This valve is for your fuel control, but it's got a nice extra feature. Now normally you're going to put it in the run position or use the choke when you're first starting it up. But when you put it in the off position while the generator is still running, it's going to use up all the gas that's in the carburetor and that's going to save you having to drain the carburetor at the end of the season. You also get two USB ports, though personally I don't really see anybody directly plugging right in. They also include these parallel operation outlets that should allow you to connect two of these generators together to double the output, but I only have the one so I can't test that function out. You can also trickle charge up a car or a boat battery using this built in port. And they do include this simple three LED indicator to tell you when the invert is working or if you've got low oil or you have an overload. You've also got a built-in hour meter, but it doesn't have any other functions. Another cool feature of these wheels, they're made of solid rubber and because it's got four of them, you can kind of just wheel this thing wherever you want to go. But if you're going to make any type of sharp turns, you can use these retractable handles and these are pretty cool because when they're folded down, it lets that generator take a lot less space in the garage. You've also got two parking brakes on the wheels, one in the front and one in the back. And this model is a full electric start, but if the battery goes dead or something breaks, you can use this manual pull start cord on the side. So it's getting around 64 decibels right now. Switch the eco throttle off. And that's gonna set it a maximum. 68 decibels, that's exactly what they advertise. Here I'm trying another test. I've got my Honda EU7000i right next to the Predator. Now ironically, the day after I got the Predator, we lost power for three days, and I thought this was a perfect opportunity to try it out. So I switched off the Honda after the first day and fired up the Predator. Now the Predator maxes out at 9,000 watts, compared to the Honda that can only go to 7,000 watts. But I wanted to put that extra power to the test to see how well it would work. Now, I love my Honda, but unfortunately it can't run an electric dryer without causing it to overload, because those things usually use around 5,000 watts alone. So I went ahead and turned the dryer on, and here's what it did to the Predator. And that was it. The generator didn't miss a beat, and the dryer worked perfectly. There's a little coverage on day two of having no power. So right now I'm on the Predator 9500, and one immediate change I noticed is when my well pump kicks on, my lights in my house don't dim. When I was using the Honda, anytime that pump would kick on and the Honda was in eco mode, the lights would dim pretty severely. When it comes to generators, you'll often hear people talk about dirty power, and the only way to tell if you've got clean power is to use a power quality analyzer like this. Now here I saw the voltage and frequency were just fine, and that VTHD is the amount of noise on the line, and under 1% is excellent. And I also verified that this one was putting out pure sine wave power, which was exactly what they advertised. 
The Predator 9500 also includes a carbon monoxide detector so that if you ever were to start it up in a garage or inside of a building, it would automatically shut itself off. And to test this, I put it inside the tent, closed all the doors and vents to see what the unit would do. And after less than a minute, the unit completely shut down. And as you can see, this red LED blinking indicates that it picked up monoxide, so this unit was working correctly. And the big question is, do you buy a Predator for $19.99 or do you get a Honda for $4,600? To help you decide, let's look at some specs and see which model wins. When it comes to engine size, the Predator has a larger engine of 459 cc's versus the Honda at just 389 cc's. The Predator also puts out more electricity with 9,500 surge watts and 7,500 running watts. The Honda in comparison is putting out 7,000 surge watts and just 5,500 running watts. And the Honda is a clear winner when it comes to the app or the smart meter. It's got Bluetooth, a mobile app, you can even remote start the generator at no additional cost. You've also got that hour meter that also includes some voltage information that you don't get on the Predator. When it comes to runtime, both models are fairly close, but the Predator wins at 18 and a half hours versus Honda's 16 hours, and the Predator is putting out more electrical power at a quarter load. Both of these generators are really quiet, but the Honda wins at just 59 decibels versus the Predator at 67. But to be fair, the Predator is again putting out more power, so it is expected that it would make additional noise. When it comes to warranties, the Honda is the clear winner with an included 3-year warranty versus just the 90-day warranty for the Predator. And you can add an additional 2-year warranty to the Predator when you're making your purchase for an additional cost. There's also a big difference in how each generator delivers fuel. The Honda uses a sophisticated fuel injection system and the Predator uses a traditional style carburetor. Now it's arguable which one is better. Most people would say the fuel injection is, but many home mechanics prefer a carburetor simply because they're easier to work on. After looking at the specs and comparing my own experience, I can say that the Predator 9500 is definitely a great machine and it did everything they advertised without any issues at all. And it's doing all that at less than half the price of the Honda. But the one problem is we don't know how long this Predator generator will last. Hondas have been around for decades and we know they're great at lasting a long time and being very reliable. But companies like Harbor Freight aren't going to make a generator that's just going to self-destruct in a few years because people would eventually catch on and they just stop buying the products altogether. So my advice is if you're going to get one of these Predators, I would just buy the generator without the extended warranty because you're really not looking for just a couple of years of reliability, you're looking for a lot longer. So the best advice is to buy one of these if it fits your needs and do all the maintenance and maybe even a little more to help it keep running as long as possible and then you really will get a bargain. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.